tiger. You can tell by her skin she's in sorry shape. It's a ship. I'll see she earns her keep. Motor steady, Jim. Japs abandon her here. The Mars beyond around the Cape, there's nothing. It was the close of the war. They were being chased. The crew anchored in here and took to land. They were wiped out. I can understand why it took your company so long to find her. Spotted her from the air. Never have found the Mary Lynn. Probably never will. Those Japs scattered our ships from here to Honshu. She looks good. You've no idea. Yeah, I think I have. You deserve a better ship, Ben. But right now, this is the best I can do. Jim, in three years, you're the first man to let me put foot aboard a ship, much less take command. I shan't forget it. It's the way I feel. I see you started some repairs. John Edmund, your first mate, did that. Good man? He seems to be. I signed him in Cotier. He's rounding up a crew and hustling gear. That's why I went down to Moresby to get you. I take it you're in a hurry. Yes, I wanted to get the Sea Tiger down to Moresby for a complete overhaul and refitting. Malik shippers have a nice contract coming up if I can put six freighters in service. This makes number six? Such as it is. She'll haul some tonnage. Right now, I want to get her in shape for the run down to Moresby. How's the power plant? Edmund says fine. He's installed batteries. He's about ready to move. The Japs may have neglected their looks, but they sure knew how to take care of what counts. Hey, how's your partner, George Duvall? He died two years ago. Too bad. His daughter, Janine, is here in Coquier. She's half owner of Malik Shippers now. I'm breaking her into the rough end of the business. I hope you don't run into any trouble, Ben. Why should I have any trouble working for Jim Clavier? Nothing to run this thing down to Morrisby. Nothing except encounter opposition in every port, from all crews to harbor masters. Even though you were acquitted, people still think you smuggled bigwig Japs out of Guinea. I've been bucking that reputation for three years. You well, know, maybe my giving you this ship will help you eventually to reestablish your good name. It's going to be tough sledding for a while. But just forget jeers and insults. People think you'll do anything for a price. You're getting around to something. Yes, I am, Ben. Something pretty fantastic. Somewhere on this ship, there is a...
man in command will probably end up falling contraband. I'd haul anything to get out of this sweat hole. Where's Mr. Clavier? I thought he was coming back. Harry, you ask more questions than any man I know. Well, where is he? I don't know. Mr. Hennig, the district officer? That's right. And you're Benjamin McRum. I've been expecting you. Do you have your master's papers? Well, naturally. Why? Oh, I would like to inspect them. Well, I, uh, I think you'll find everything in order. Reinstated the 10th of April. That's right. You, uh, you seem surprised. I'm familiar with your background. Clever is a friend of mine. Well, you must have cautioned him against hiring me. Strongly. Well, Clavier is a friend of mine, too. Rest assured that I'll live up to the responsibilities of command. See that you do. Where's Clavier? I want to talk to him. And in Morrisby. What? I thought he was in a big hurry when he went to get you. He had a complete clearance of title. I thought this was accomplished. I notarized the necessary papers. Well, some other firm filed a claim. Maybe take two or three days. Now, red tape's not my business. My job is to get the Sea Tiger in order. Where can I find Miss Janine Duvall? Up at Malok Shippers. Well, thanks. to knock out this number three bulkhead? Well, if it doesn't collapse like a punctured blim, I'd say about $800. Mm. Oh, I figured somebody would be on deck. Well, Ben McGrun. Welcome to Cotier, Captain. I'm John Edmonds. Oh, yes. First mate, Clavier told me. Glad to know you. It's nice to see you again, uh, Janine. I didn't expect to be working for you. Nice to have you with us, Captain. Is uh, Clavier up front, Skipper? No, he stayed in Moresby. Moresby? But why? He knows time is important. Unavoidable red tape. We should be ready to steam out as soon as he arrives. Good. Then I'm free to get to work. Incidentally, Clavier left specific instructions that no one was to board the Sea Tiger till he returned. Why? Search me. But I made good use of my time. I borrowed Hennick's launch and went down to Cobol to pick up some gear. Did uh, you stop by Bull Bay to inspect the Sea Tiger? No, too much of a rush. I'll trust your judgment as to repairs. First thing is the launch. I want you to check the motor. Oh, but I should run up to the sea tank. We'll be running up in the morning, Mr. Edmund. I don't want that launch to hold us up. Yes, sir. There's no reason to be so crisp. I'm sorry, but I had my reasons. Where have you been? What have you been doing? I spent a little time missing you. Then I got back to normal. I don't get it. Well, let's put it this way, Ben. I sat through the trial for six weeks rooting for you. Then when they found you innocent, I went home, expecting you to drop by for a celebration. I could still be sitting there. Janine, I won a trial, yes, but I lost my reputation. Now, what good is an acquittal after all the lies that were told? Were they lies? You know they were. Oh, I walked off out of shame, I suppose, but that was three years ago. Ben, for the time being, let's just talk about the ship, shall we? 
Sure. We've got a lot to talk about. Jim Clavier was killed aboard the Sea Tiger this morning. Killed? But why? I don't know. But I could have been murdered, too. Except for one thing. What was that? The killer was trying to blame it onto me. He was counting on my reputation. Why would he do that? I don't know. He could have shot me, but instead he decided to slug me. Janine, I need your help. I've already told Hennig the same thing I told Edmund. They're bound to find out about Clavier eventually. Did anybody go up to the Sea Tiger this morning? I don't know. Is there anything of value aboard the ship? Not to my knowledge. Why? Well, Clavier was trying to tell me something. Maybe he was killed to buy time. That doesn't make much sense. Sure it does. If Hennig arrests me, it'll take at least three weeks to get you another skipper. That'd give the killer time to do what? Find what he's looking for. If he's looking for something. You still doubt me, don't you? What do you expect, blind faith? Clavier didn't have an enemy in this world. Suddenly you appear and he's murdered. I'm not saying that you killed him, but... Thanks. It's been a royal welcome. Where are you going? To tell Hannick. I think that's the intelligent thing to do. Janine, I can't accomplish anything in jail. Be reasonable. I wouldn't kill Kabir. He's my best friend. Why, in order to commit murder, you've got to have a motive like, like revenge or jealousy, gain. You know, with Kabir's death, you're sole owner of Malik Shippers. You're not accusing me. If a sharp prosecutor got you in his hands, he'd tear you to ribbons. But I couldn't have done it. I've been right here in my office. Naturally. A smart girl would hire someone else to do it. You don't believe what you're saying. Don't I? I'm checking into the hotel. If I were you, I'd be quiet and be careful. I'll see what I can do for you. Call it blind faith. Seen that passionate concoction for me. A specialty in the form of welcome. Rum, papaya, lime, orange, grated coconut, cinnamon, and half a fig. Drink it yourself with my compliments. I'll have straight rum. As you wish, Skipper. Tell me, Harry. Any boats pulling into the harbor this morning? Just John Edmund. He took Hennick's launch over to Cobalt for cabling. Got it at a discount, I understand. Edmund knows his way around. Is there a land route to Bull Bay? Yes, but it's not recommended. Since the war, some of the natives have reverted. To what? Headhunting. Anybody pull out of the harbor this morning? When Edmund came back, Bendy took the launch out to meet the coastal freighter to get mail and provisions. Who's Bendy? No, oh, just a beachcomber. You wouldn't be interested in him. Interested? What do you mean? You're looking for someone. That's right, Harry. Clavier told me somebody's looting a sea tiger. They're going out to meet Bendy. He's bringing in the mail. Skipper, you aren't interested in looters. There's something going on around here, and I want in on it. You wouldn't come down here just to manage a worthless freighter. You're too shrewd. What do you know, Harry? Nothing. That's the trouble. I only want to help, and I expect very little in the way of profit. That's Quick Boy, my Saholi bartender. Most loyal and dependent. What makes you think I need help? Because this port is full of stranded cutthroats and beached rum runners. The war took everything. Everyone is bitter. I suggest you keep your nose clean. Thanks. I'd better wash my hands, too. Thanks. Wait, please. Sorry, some other time. I got things to do. I say, wait. It's the prince between Harry and Quick Boy. I know things. Such as? You're not wanted in Cotier. Go back to Morrisby. Who says so? Quick Boy. I watch from mountain top and see you and Clavier go to Sea Tiger. I see only you leave. Look, 
I come from a long line of headhunters, Massachusetts headhunters. What else did you see at Bull Bay? Nothing. You're lying. You saw someone else leave that ship, either by land or boat. No. Maybe I tell Hennig. Maybe you won't live long enough to tell anybody. Why were you watching the ship? Like Harry, I think maybe something nice, Avor. You think? Why did you tell me to leave Gautier? I hear one long time, Skipper. You only come today. If something aboard Sea Tiger is mine, not yours. Suppose it belongs to Malik shippers. Sea Tiger old forgotten ship is war prize. I don't think you've told half what you know, but I'll find out. Meantime, don't let me catch you near the Sea Tiger. Who's that man, Bendy? He came on the freighter from Moresby. What's he want? He wants to see Clavier. Mr. Williams, this is Captain McGrun. Benjamin McGrun? That's right. Uh, how do you do, sir? I, uh, that is, I, I wanted to see Mr. Clavier. Malik Shipper's office in Moresby told me that he'd returned to Couture with his skipper and... Well, uh, uh, Clavier and I got as far as the dock, Mr. Williams. A messenger overtook us. Clavier had to return to ship's license and registry. Perhaps I can help you. Mr. Williams represents the leader Phipps Insurance Company in Sydney. We've been looking for the Sea Tiger ourselves. I, I'm here to settle a claim. Oh? These gems have been aboard the ship for almost five years. How much are these gems worth? $50,000. How'd they get aboard? Our client was aboard the Sea Tiger when the Japs confiscated the ship in 1942. And your clients didn't take the jewels off the ship? Well, he claimed he couldn't. He was herded away with the rest of the passengers. At the same time, the Japs couldn't have possibly found those stones. Well, why not? They were hidden in a special safe. Do you think you can find this safe, Mr. Williams? Well, I don't know, sir, but I have information to go on. Could you run me up? It's pretty late to make it today. Yeah, particularly if we have to search for the gems. I suggest you check into the hotel and go up in the morning. I'll go with you. Thank you, sir. Is that all you do is sleep in the lobby? No. Sometimes I sleep on the beach. I don't know why I have a very Everybody else does something. You're lazy. You're a loafer. My dear, be content. Sometimes beachcombers stumble onto pearls. Aren't you going to help me fix up the rooms? I never have. How do you do, miss? Hello. Could I get a room for tonight? Certainly. That's right, just a few minutes ago. Oh, I see Captain McGrun is registered here. Oh, yes, he is uh, across the hall from you. Hot here, ain't it? Quite warm. I'll show you your room. You have more baggage? Yes, they'll bring it up from the boat. Oh. Thank you.
Williams. I quit, boys. I not believe you come to Cotier for jewels. What are you doing here? Get out before I call the district officer. You will call nobody. I have waited many months for this treasure. Now I decide is enough for two men. We will go to see Tiger together. We're not going anywhere, mister. I advise you to get out of here. Ah, no jewels, Mr. Williams. I am only a man who knows where is treasure. It's smart we still launch and go tonight. You don't seem to understand. I represent an insurance company. My purposes are ethical. Now, here, I'll, um... I'll show you uh, photographs of the gem. <laughs> Shower? Have you seen Mr. Ball? She went to the cove for a swim. Oh, thanks. I'm interested in partner. It's not yet supper time. Think about it. Nobody goes to see Tiger without me. What are you doing here? You know, this reminds me of the beach at Maui, remember? You got the wrong torso in mind. It was Waikiki. <laughs> That's right, it was. See, I've got something I want to talk to you about. Oh, Edmund, I thought you were at the launch. That launch needed going over like a dog needs fleas. Say, I've just been talking to the boss, and she agrees that I should run up for the Sea Tiger now. I've installed batteries, and I can work on the power plant all night. John says he can have the ship ready to sail by tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's mighty helpful of you, Mr. Edmund. We can check the power plant in the morning. All it needs is a few gaskets and some rewiring. Oh, and how did you know? Clavier briefed me in detail. Skipper, Malik Shippers has a big contract at stake, and he depends on getting the Sea Tiger into operation immediately. Now, Mr. Duval is the boss, and she says it's all right for me to go to work. So I'm going. You're staying here, Mr. Edmund. I'm skipper of that ship. I give the orders. I suggest you get over to the hut and hire the rest of a skeleton crew. Is that the way you want it, Mr. Duval? It's not a question of what she wants. Look, I have a contract with Malik Shippers. If you're unhappy with this assignment, turn in your papers. I can get along temporarily without a first mate. Yes, sir. There's no reason to insult John. He's sincere. Perhaps, but all night's a long time to work or look for something. Are we trying to uh, find a killer or help him pull a job? You're going altogether too far in regard to Mr. Edmund. Mr. Colbert had a lot of confidence in him, and so do I. Take it easy, honey. I'm only suggesting that we don't trust anybody. I haven't told anyone. But I see no reason why we have to interrupt all business operations. We're not. Edmund's up signing up a crew. Hey, uh, an insurance man by the name of Williams is in town. Mr. Hannig told me. Well, then you know he's here to adjust a claim. Yes. What sort of a claim? I'm not sure. Thanks again. I stumbled onto a letter in there, written by Williams, addressed to you and Clavier. It's dated the first. That means it's been hanging around here for two weeks. It reads in part, tremendously relieved to learn that you've located the Sea Tiger. I'm leaving Sydney immediately to adjust a gem claim. Trusting you will keep this information confidential as uh, blah, 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 blah. 
That's why Clavier told Edmund not to let anyone board ship. I suppose Edmund could have seen the letter. But so could a lot of other people if they chose to ransack my office. Like me. Like you. You know what I'm thinking, Janine? You could have uh, told me this this morning when I was looking for a motive. Maybe I didn't have enough confidence in you to, to tell you. Obviously. You may have had some other reasons, but I'll, uh, I'll skip those. This morning I thought, here's a scared girl alone in a, in a rotten port. She's got a right to be in doubt. I thought a few hours would pass, the bills would clear. You'd remember how we used to feel about each other. We weren't angels in those days, but we weren't killers either. Now I mention a man by the name of Williams and you hedge again. Your confidence seems to be placed in Edmund. I suggest you use him for a skipper. From now on, my only responsibility is to turn those jewels over to Hannick and clear myself of murder. This is a short term, Peterson. If you work out as an engineer, we'll put you on as a regular. Maybe I won't like permanent duty on a sea tiger. Shove off. Mr. Red. Hey. Yeah. Mr. Redmond, do you ever buy ideas? I got plenty of ideas of my own, Harry. I imagine. But this idea, for this idea, a man might pay considerable money. What are you driving at? I've been boiling down guesses. There's something of great value on the Sea Tiger. And without even becoming involved, I figured out a way to find it. What if I say I'm not interested? I keep on talking. Your name isn't Edmund. It's Randall. <laughs> Looks like we're going to be friends whether we like each other or not. What's the gimmick? Ah, if it works, and it must, I want $1,000. A $1,000? All right, it's a deal. Well, every ship's engineer keeps a log. Repairs, remodeling, weaknesses, and so forth. Now, those records would be kept in the company safe up at Malik Shippers. Now, there would be the original drawing of the ship and blueprints of the remodeling. Now, in remodeling, certain areas become concealed and are difficult to locate. By comparing... Yes, I know. By comparing the drawings, you could find the hollow spaces. I've already tried that. Oh. Tough luck, Harry. I guess you're going to have to get your grand somewhere else.
Captain McGrun. I think I saw him walking down the beach. I saw him moving around back there. I don't see anybody. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Someone was trying to open the company safe this afternoon when I surprised him. It's probably the same person. Maybe you scared him off when you shouted. Oh, I hope so. Well, one thing's certain. It wasn't me. I'm glad of that. Ben, I, I'm sorry for what I said this afternoon. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it about quitting. Why did you come to the beach? Well, I thought I might find another launch. You know, Edmund was the only one who pulled into Cotier this morning. But he'd been to Cobo. Yeah, so I thought if somebody else had a launch, it'd be a nice place to hide one. Beautiful. It's like old times. Yes, but lots of time to make up. Yeah. The prowler wasn't after money, but he might have been after the ship's drawings. It suddenly occurred to me that that'd be a good way to find the jewels. Blueprints. You always were beautiful. Now you're getting bright. Well, don't you want to look at them? Not particularly. Do you? Not particularly. Captain McGrath! Captain McGrath! I've been looking everywhere for you. The beachcomber said, uh... Oh, that's all right. You can... This is Mr. Bell. You can speak freely. This is Mr. Williams. Uh, how do you do, miss? Well, first of all, this afternoon, a native broke into my hotel room. He knew something about the jewels, tried to make a crooked deal with me. Then just half an hour ago, while I was having something to eat, someone broke in my room again. They stole my map. Look, look how they've cut my briefcase to bits. I thought you didn't have a map. Well, I, uh, was being deliberately evasive, sir. Mr. Hennick's office is, uh, quite public. We have some drawings. Did a boat pull out of the harbor? Well, I haven't seen any. All right, if someone does have a map, we've got to get up there right away. These jewels are just as important to me as they are to you. Come on, let's go. 100 to 1, your native was quick boy. He probably stole your map. He might be heading up the jungle trail to Bouvet now. seem agitated. I am, and plenty. Ten hours, not one word from Clavier. I don't mind saying, with McGrun in the picture, I smell dirty work. Now, Clavier left instructions that nobody was to board that ship. That includes you, me, Williams, McGrun, everybody. What would you suggest? I suggest that you wire Clavier direct and get his okay. Yeah, that's the best way to protect Malik shippers. We should get an answer in less than an hour. That's fine. for you. I just want to let this office know that I'm taking Williams up to the Sea Tiger right now. One moment, McGrath. I've just wired Clavier for approval. Nobody's going up there until I get an answer from Clavier. Look, someone just stole Williams' map. What if you can't locate Clavier? This is a strange thought. If I can't reach him, it will become a matter for the police. In that case, we'll all stand by. Probably our conscientious first mate. Got the keys to the launch? 
They're in my desk at the office. We're gonna slip the harbor fast. Kenny will find out in no time that Kavir's missing. Willie, you sneak out on the pier and onto the launch and keep low. Right Janine, on. you follow. I'll get the keys. Keys. Sorry, I'm turning him over to Hennick. Why? He's impounding the launch till he hears from Clavier. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll get out the office with you. Slow and silent. The first sign of anybody, give me the signal and I'll give her the power. Right. Clavier departed Morsby with McRun. Please clarify. together. to the sharks. Mr. Hedman, it's 
no need be excited. Can't follow McGrun. Henry Grunge broke. Also, McGrun come back. We wait. Wait for what? I don't know what you're talking about. You very smart. I smart also. It's time we be friends. McGrun come back because it's no block and tackle on ship. Block and tackle? You, you see, I very smart. You not know what is on sea tiger. I think it's no jewels, Mr. Edmo. I also know where is bark and tackle. We be friends? Mm, we be friends. Maybe. I think you'd better stay here with the launch. I think so, too. What are you whispering about? Who knows? According to the blueprints, the bridge is worth looking into. No, no. Where's the refrigerator compartment? I thought someone took your man. They were trying. If I hadn't lied to you, you wouldn't have brought me out here in such a hurry. The reefer compartment's abaft the galley. Doubt you. Take a look at these, Captain. It's here, all of it. The brooch is the necklace. I told Hennig 50,000. I'm telling you, McGrun, it's worth 100,000. Are we going to stand here and gloat or get out? Of course we're getting out. Now, here's how we'll work it. We'll send in a full report that we found the safe empty. There's no one to disprove us. And after about uh, six months, we'll start fencing the stones in Shanghai. You played your hand pretty smooth, didn't you? The moment you heard the name Ben McGrun, you figured you had a partner. Well, that's right. What's the matter? We'll split 50-50. We'll split nothing. I'm turning those jewels over to Hennick to prove that I had no motive for killing a man. Let's have him. Look, do I have to get rough? Don't try to make a fool out of me, McGrun. I know what you're up to. Here, you can have all the jewels. Now what are you implying? That there's something far more valuable aboard this freighter. You want to turn in these jewels to clear yourself and then make off with the bigger haul. Now, let's explain this bigger haul. Don't act dumb. Quick boy hinted at it. He wasn't even interested in my map. Come on, what is it and where is it? Oh.
would look over there, Janine. It was an accident. He killed himself over a bag of bubbles. Oh, I'm glad you're all right. Ben, I don't like the ship. Let's go. Oh, relax. I need your help. You don't need my help. You've got your proof. This tub is turning into an Aladdin's lamp. Every time you rub it, it pays off. Oh, let's not rub it the wrong way. Maybe worth it. You figured under the bridge, didn't you? Yes. There's at least a two-foot area here between decks that hasn't been accounted for. I'll take a look. Hey, this bridge deck is covered with steel matting, Janine. Be a good place to conceal a compartment if there is one. Hey, take a look in that pile of junk next to you. See if there's a scroll bar. There's a pipe here. Will that do? Oh, I doubt it. Look at the engine room. Maybe there's one down there. Stock of champagne. It is. It's a lot mellower. Might be some old tools or Chinese script. take a block and tackle. And to steal it is a two-man job. What was that? It wasn't a bilge rat. You stay here. Please. What are you doing on board this ship? Scavenging. How do I know you didn't scavenge Jim Clavier? What's that, sir? Bendy. He was helping me yesterday morning. Then he went to meet the coastal freighter. Yes, I don't even know what you're talking about. This is the first time I ever put foot aboard the Sea Tiger. When did you come aboard the ship? Well, late last night. The, I came by the jungle trail. I, uh, I have a small outboard fishing craft, and I... Uh-huh. <laughs> Decided to equip her at our expense. Yes, but I'll put everything back, Skipper. I overheard your argument with Williams. I can testify that his death was an accident. Mr. Duval was not aboard. You could sure use another witness. Why should I trust a two-bit looter? Well, for one thing, I could have shot either one of you half a dozen times during the past half hour. You got a gun? Yeah, sure. Here. Bendy. What do you know about the gold on the bridge? Another thing, sir. Well, that's what they're after. If they were after jewels, they'd have been here a long time ago to try and stop us. Quick boy tried. Yeah, but half-heartedly. Now it boils down to either him or Edmund or both. What can we do? We'll make the killer show his hand. But how? We'll set a trap for him. You and Bendy stay here and guard the ship. I'll go back to Cotier. I'll leave the launch up the beach and walk into town. I'll tell him that you and Williams went on to Morrisby. It's a neat idea. That'll make the killer think that the Sea Tiger's unguarded. Hennick and I'll stand close by. As soon as someone makes a move, we'll follow. I want Hennick to catch our man in the act of stealing the gold. Then whoever it is, we should let come aboard. That's right. Hennick and I'll be close by. Oh, uh, Bendy, you uh, put some gear on Williams' body so it'll go unnoticed. 
And honey, take that worried look off your face. This is going to be a pleasure. You know, if I had some block and tackle, I might, uh, might be talked into going to Bally. You and me and one gold ingot. I'm afraid you're going to have to settle for Moresby. Dry dog at that. Now you'll launch a run now, at least temporarily, but you're going to need some new cables. Thanks. Any word from Moresby? Not yet, but my ground will have to go that way. He hasn't enough fuel to make it around the Cape. Where is that loud Bendy? You can't even depend on him to get the mail. Can't you meet the freighter? No, and it's due in 40 minutes. I'm standing by the telegraph. Look, I'm expecting some gear from Darwin. Why don't you give me the keys and I can pick up the mail? Will you, Edmund? That's good. And I wish you would check with the hotel and see if Alola's got anything going out. All right. Malik Shippers has a couple packages to go out, too. Mr. Edmund. Mr. Edmund, where's Quick Boy? How should I know? Oh, it's a sweltering day. I thought perhaps I could ride out to the freighter with you. Harry, you get on my nerves. Go back and tend your pub. Ask a man a simple question. Such people. Such people. You must be out of your mind coming back here. Not at all. I'm sorry I had to slug you last night, Edmund. But I got what I went after. A fortune and jewels. Here, take a look. Janine and Williams went on to Morris being in launch. I walked back. Why? I want to turn these jewels over to Hennick personally. And he can forward them to the insurance company. Any word on uh, Clavier's yet? Why don't you go down and ask Hennick yourself? You've got more surprises yet in store for you. First, your cables. Second, a pouch of jewels. You can explain why you came back here to a jury. I'm not interested. Get in there! You've got to stop jumping the gun, Hennick. I've got a long story. To begin with, Clavier's dead. We found his body on the beach early this morning. Get in that cell. I hope they will hang you from the highest yard arm in Morsby. You're being stupid, Hennick. I need your help right now. Get in there! Go back. You can talk as much as you want from there. I'm firing more speed. The first thing you can tell them is that there's a million dollars worth of gold aboard the Sea Tiger. Then you can tell them that Williams is dead, too. Cancel our plans, Bright Eyes. McGrun just showed up with the booty. Jules. Oh? Don't you act so calm. You're the boy that told me there are no jewels aboard. I... I am surprised. Here. Here is Black and Tackle. You, you should not do that, Mr. Edmund. We are friends because I need you. In war, I in Japanese Navy aboard Sea Tiger. Japs go through islands, take gold, rings, candlestick, coins, city treasures, melt all gold in big bars. I help stow gold aboard Sea Tiger. Then Americans come and kill all Japs. But quick boy, gold bars too heavy for one man, so I wait long time for smart friend. You. We both be rich. Wait, you no believe it's gold? Why should I? This I keep for a long time to prove. Go. Pure gold. Well, don't spill it, you fool! There's nothing, Mr. Edmund. We go now, or we may talk. Come on, I got the keys to Hennick's launch. Excellent.
I knew my perseverance would eventually pay off. I have warned you, Harry, not be nosy. Either you cut me in or I turn you both over to Hennig. I've heard everything. Now, surely there's enough gold for the three of us. <laughs> you know, maybe he's got a good point, quick boy. Three is good protection. He's fine with me. That's the spirit. All right, Harry. Run up to Malik Shippers and pick up the mail. We'll have the block and tackle ready by the time you get back. I'll get it. Huh? We'd better not board Hennig's launch together. I crawl out under pier. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> McGrann in there. I want to bring him down to Morsty. I'll be back as quick as I can. Don't let Edmund go. I tell you, Janine and Bendy are aboard the Sea Tiger. If so, they will be safe. You said yourself, any thief would need a block and tackle. There's none on my launch. You also said it's a two-man job. Edmund is all alone. Where's Quick Boy? Oh, relax. I'm not even convinced there is gold on the ship. You can put a gun in my back. You can handcuff me. But let's get that other launch and follow Edmund. It's been a half an hour. He's not coming back with any mail. There's only been 20 minutes. That's too much head start already. If anything happens to Janine, I'll get your hide for this. Because you bring back some jewels, I'm supposed to let you loose. Maybe you realize too late you couldn't get away with your plans. As far as I'm concerned, your every lie and action indicates that you killed Clavier. And why not Janine and Williams? Mr. Hennick. Mr. Hennick. What happened, Harry? Edmund and Quick Boy, go out to Sea Tiger. Here is some of morning's mail. Senor here. Hennick, I saw his back right in here. Help, Harry, quick. Get a couple of men. Carry him to the hotel. Now, will you let me out of here? Come on, hurry up. The launch is way down the beach. They're already way ahead of us. Come on. Makes one bar a piece. Six hundred pounds. Yeah, but that launch will carry two more. We'll be heavy, very slow. Will you stop worrying? We've got enough fuel to make it around the Cape de Marua. Well, maybe someone follow us here. <laughs> well, if they do, they'll have to walk. Now we got plenty of time. Let's get going. One bar is fortune, Mr. Edmund. I not lie. We just snap out of it. Every time we hoist one of these, we're picking a million pockets. Now don't look so sour. You're getting rich. Maybe too rich. Yeah.
We've got to stop them. Just cut the rope. Oh, that isn't enough. Yeah, don't worry. Greed will slow them. Well, guide it. Go on down below. All right, stand by to swing about. This didn't break by accident. Looks like it's been cut. How? You crazy. We go. Somebody aboard this ship. There just has to be. Maybe Clavier goes. It's no time to fix rope. Let's go. Shut up. This rope has been tampered with. This was no accident. You take starboard. I'll go port side. I can't hope to get the drop on both of them and hold them indefinitely. Maybe McGrun won't get here for hours. What do we do? I'm going to steal their launch. At least that'll take attention away from you. Here, you better keep this. Fighting someone. I don't see Janine. Late, Janine. Hennig's a hard man to convince. You got here, that's what counts. Well, let's get Hennig aboard so we can verify William's death. Come on, Edward. Let's go. You won't have to testify, Bendy. This was an accident, clearly enough. Thank you, sir. But the Clavier's death wasn't an accident. I'm very glad to learn Harry alive. That means I not kill anybody. But you tried to. Attempt murder, not so long in jail. I not care. But I not like to lose gold because of dumb partner. So I think I tell. Tell what? I see you kill Kabir. He's lying. I went to Cobol and Hennig's Lodge. Get up. Thank you, Skipper. I follow Edmund here other morning to see if maybe he find gold. When McGrun and Kabir board ship, Edmund take gun. Then he shoot Kabir. Then he hit McGrun and run away. 
You were a lot closer than the top of the mountain. Yes, I hear aboard ship. Then you dispose of Clavier's body. Uh-huh. See, I make compassion for Mr. Edmund. He's crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Edmund, I'm placing you under arrest on a charge of murder. Take him below. Need any help? Thanks. I can take care of it myself. Now that the gold's in Hennig's hands, I guess we can get this tub underway. I suppose so, but why ask me? Well, you're Malik Shippers. You're the boss. You're still the captain. Uh-huh. You know something? The captain's in love with you. You think that sort of thing would last, Captain? Well, if we don't hit another squall. And you better keep a sharp eye on the weather. All right, let's get a crew and head for Morrissey. Mr. Hennig? Yes? I hurt you. Hurry back. I don't like the looks of that sky. Did you hear that? I heard it. 